if I drop this thermo couple into the water, we should get a hundred. Let's see what we get. Boil up again. And there you go, look at that. One hundred. The water is boiling. You cannot get better than that. You can see where I've put the thermocouple, right in between the two spark plugs there. That's for cylinder head temperature. And that was the uh, thermocouple of the gauge I just tested with the boiling water that read exactly 100 degrees Celsius when the water was boiling, which is what you want to see, so that's accurate. And if you see on this scrap bit of cylinder head that I've hacksawed up, you can see that's pretty much where I've drilled it through, right through that area there see where it would be sitting there. That's uh, the banjo bolt that you're looking at there. That's the spark plug hole. And where my thumb is, that's part of the water jacket where the water runs through. And that's the Walsh plug on the side there where the sand comes out. That's the water jacket all through there. This is actually just a quarter section of the head. And we cut that up just to see how the casting's looking and all the, the details. But anyway, you can see the material I'm drilling into there where that dotted line is. That's the meat that I've got to drill into for the um, probe so there's no risk of touching the water jacket as long as I stay on the same sort of uh, parallel line to the, to the in, uh, inclination of the spark plugs. You're pretty safe to drill and tap there and I've just drilled that down about half an inch or so and uh, tapped at M4 and that's just an M4 screw there, cap screw with a washer and clamping down the thermocouple. CHT thermocouple right there. So I'll hook that up to the gauge and then uh, we'll give another run tomorrow and um, get a CHT reading. But I'm pretty comfortable because the water temperature is to me are far more important uh, as they're indicative of what's happening at the head. So, but yeah, it's nice to have the CHT in there as well. All right, so <clears throat> just preparing the plane for another test run today. I was very pleased with how it went yesterday, but um, after sorting out the CHT probe, which was not working because it was, had a broken wire, it was snapped at the thermocouple, uh, I changed all that over and I, <coughs> I calibrated that um, thermocouple and gauge on the bench, uh, you know, with a 12 volt battery and some boiling water and a kettle. And that's a good way of, you know, getting, finding where 100 degrees is. And obviously, uh, we found that on that gauge, the new gauge that I installed with the thermocouple, it was perfect, right on 100 degrees, literally exactly on 100 degrees Celsius when the water was boiling, which is correct. So I thought this morning, I'll pull the cows off and uh, do the same for the oil temperature. And lo and behold, I found that this sender is reading 13 degrees too high, which you, you often find. I normally check them um, because, you know, 10 or 15 degrees either side can be enough to drive certain individuals uh, over the wall. But, um, so anyway, I've got plenty of these in stock. We carry our own video gauges, so I've uh, put one in, my own ones in boiling water and uh, it's measuring pretty much right on 100 degrees. So um, I'm happy with that, so I've changed that over. So that's going to find me a good 10, 13 degrees Celsius. Um, not that I was concerned about it anyway, I can tell yesterday the engine was very happy um, and the old temperatures were still okay. So this will give us a better indication now. Anyway, so I'm going to take it out for a buzz right now. It's a warmer day. It's 30 degrees here today in Melbourne. Um, not much wind, so it's going to be good conditions. So we'll get up there and give it a good good go. Cheers. All right, so I've got the new gauge, uh, CHT gauge and probe installed. Um, and I've recalibrated and changed out the uh, oil temperature probe, which was out by... 12, 13 degrees. Anyway, I'm going to fire up now. Has, engine hasn't been run this morning. Just about to go out for a blast. Um, I'll demonstrate to you here now in this video the ignition. So I've got the ignition on the left and the standard Jabiru on the right. So I've only replaced the left, which is what we normally do, or the right, either or. But in this case, the left. The customer's actually having trouble with the magneto on the right, so we changed out the Jabiru coil on that side, and that's fixed that. So we've got the ignition on the left. I'm going to start it just on the ignition because I've only got one hand. In fact, it's going to be a bit difficult. I don't know how to get the starter button and the switch at the same time. Um, geez, then we're going to do this. All right, so turn the master on. I might be able to flick it. And throttle closed. Choke on. There's the ignition there. Oh, I can do it. 
So, the ignition on. Watch this. Clear prop. Straight away. Huh? How about that? Dead cold. First blade every time. Alright, how about that for ignition? You could even hand start the engine if your battery was very flat and the starter motor couldn't crank it. As long as you had some power, you could ha even hand start the engine with that ignition. Not that I'd recommend it, but you definitely could.